Okay, today we got the single cab in the shop. Got a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of work to do to that thing. So uh, let's get on it. Dude, get out of the bus. Are you having trouble seeing subscribers? Are you blinded by all the other channels out there? Then you need Subshades. These shades will help you find all the subscribers you'll need. Try them while riding your bike. Try them while making cool parts. Try them while you sleep. Try Subshades and you'll see the subscribers just pour in. Not sold in stores online or anywhere else because they're not real, but you can still subscribe now. We got the 56 single cab in the shop. We're looking it over. Uh, I know you guys saw it before and some of you were like, why would you even cut that thing up? It's so nice. Well, it's not nice. No. It's actually a hunk of poo. Yeah. <laughs> it's not <laughs> as bad as they come. <laughs> it's pretty bad. And I tell you what, with all, with you guys gave a few suggestions um, and me and Ryan been talking and dreaming and we've got a plan. A and wait, plan. Till, wait till you see it come together. So back when I used to do TV shows and stuff, there was an old guy who worked with me and he used to look at a car like this and say, man, it's got good bones. And this one does. Yes, it's gonna be a, It's gonna be a good one. That's, this is gonna be incredible. The base is here. Yep. So. Yeah, we got everything, you know, this is all coming out anyways. We gotta change it all up. We're gonna, gonna do what we gotta do, but uh, it's, you know, we're not trying to make it stock again, so we don't need numbers matching. It's, bus would never go back. I mean, you can make it numbers matching, but it'd be pointless because it would all be new. And now that's not original bus anymore anyways. So. Right. I, I'm guessing we're going to replace 75% of the thing. Absolutely. If, if not more. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's a 56. Yes. Got so. the little back window. It's a 56 single cab. So it's, it's definitely got the cool factor. Speak, speaking of the window, we're just going to get started today. We're going to start with some small stuff. And uh, this will be nice to show you guys some tricks. Like if you got a 21 window or whatever bus you have, you don't have to buy the whole window to fix the the, uh, the lip. You can actually just fix a small part of it. Save yourself a ton of money, save yourself a ton of work, because cutting out a whole window is way more work than fixing a, a little small section of yeah. it. Try to save what you can if you, if yep. you can. We just Even if uh, there's a couple tools you'll need to do it, even if you have to buy those tools, it'll be way, way better off than actually yeah. Uh, doing the work or even buying the other parts. So. Yeah, you can buy the part or you can buy the tools and make your parts and now you have the tools for the next time and you will need them again. <laughs> Let's get to cutting. Let's do it. Okay, this is the section we're gonna fix today. Just the, something to get started on. Um, what we're gonna do is, we, this, this corner is good. This corner is obviously not. So we're gonna use the shrinker over here to make this piece and obviously we have to bend a piece up. When you bend these flanges, leaving them a little high, you know, a little longer than what, what's already there is okay. You don't want them to be too short, but if you make them a little high, we can actually tack weld this piece in and you can come back in with your sander and sand it all up and get it right on. Obviously this one here is gonna get welded, so it'll have to be right, but if it's too big, that's okay. You can sand it down. If it's too small, you gotta start over and make a new one. We don't wanna do that. So what we're gonna do is measure what we have for flanges here. And what we need is like five eighths on this side, and this is just under three eighths that way. So we'll go over, well, actually we need it a length too. Go about eh, 25 and a half. We'll go over, bend the piece up, and we'll shrink that corner, we'll get it to fit, and we'll come back in here and cut this out and let it rip. Okay, back to the table. Got our sheet metal here. This is 18 gauge. I like to use 18 gauge whenever I'm making parts because it's a little bit thicker, easier to weld. When you get back to the car, for the most part, it's just gonna be a nicer part. You buy a lot of cheap aftermarket parts that are real thin and you get back trying to weld it on there, especially MIG welding, you'll be burning holes all through it, make a big giant mess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it. There's absolutely a hundred ways to, to cut this stuff, but you don't have air shears. This is a good tool I have. If, at your house for cutting this kind of stuff. It leaves a nice clean line. It's, it's a little wavy, but it's, it's you know better than hitting it with a jigsaw or a cutoff wheel. You could use a cutoff wheel if you had to, but kind of a waste. So I got a straight line here. We'll just cut that off to get started and uh, see how that goes. I'll throw a piece of, piece of wood underneath of that.
there you have it. But we have a jump shear behind us here. That'll cut nice, perfect straight lines every time. Rob's gonna show you how that works. All right, since we're using the shear, we're gonna go and uh, lay this thing out first. And the first thing you wanna do is just get you a, a nice straight edge so you'll cut your first cut with the shear. You just lay it on a straight edge and inscribe it all the way down. What you wanna do with that, you're gonna cut that, then you need to lay out the rest of the, what we're gonna be bending, which is the first bend is gonna be 3 8 So we just lay out 3 8 make us a little mark there, one down here, and then from there we're gonna go 5 8 So we go from that line, we go 5 8 out there, and then 5 8 down here. And we'll scribe those. All right, now you get your scribe on. There's one thing I like to do when we're going to the, when we uh, do the, the bend on the sheet metal break, is I take the, the little punch and I actually just, a little, a little punch on each line. And what that does, I do it on each end. What that does is when you get into the break, a lot of times it's hard to see these little scribed lines and you can line it right up with the edge of the, the break and get a nice, precise bend. Let's head over to this here. So this is the stop shear, one of my favorite tools in the shop because it makes life easy. But like Ryan said, if you don't have one, you can use shears, you can use the, the air shears that uh, Ryan used. Uh, just, just makes it a lot easier for sure. So you take those lines that I did with the, the punch and the scribe, and all you do is you line those up on the, on the blade there, both sides. You use a flashlight because you can't see. All right. Then all you do is stop it. Yeah. Then we just slide it forward and get the other one. Then we go to the brake. Not the commercial brake. All right, all we gotta do is put a little bend in here and then we're ready for the next step. What we're gonna do, stick it in our brake here. Being that they're small flanges like this, you wanna stick the bigger flange underneath. It'll help keep it from pulling out on you when you, when you bend it. And I put a piece of angle in here. This is a finger brake. And uh, the fingers can, on thinner metal, show a line, like little bumps in there as you go. So stick a piece of angle in there. And no, if you, if, if you don't have a, a break at home, you can actually take like a piece of angle iron, clamp it to your table. And uh, I've, I've used like a hinge on, a, on another piece of metal. You can make your own little break. A couple of ways you can do it. Or, I mean, if it's not too big, if it's like an 18 inch piece or something like that, you can get them at the, the freight store for like eight or 40 bucks. And a little bit bigger ones aren't that much. Matter of fact, one close to this size is 200. So again, when, you, when you're into a project like this and if you got the space to put the tools in the long run, you're gonna save a lot of time and money. So let's get this thing done right. up here. Make that end up. So you just, those marks that we did with the punch earlier, if you line those up, usually on this side here, I get it first because uh, it goes down closer usually. You don't end up pulling when you clamp it. So. Yeah, so this one goes down and that one really tightens her down. There we go. You got her lined up, then all you do is you do a little bend. Man, we got an angle in here. We want 90. We, we can pull it right up. If we didn't have the angle in there, we'd go past 90, so. Yeah. Are you going to do, do yeah. a double? Yeah, let's hit it again. Yeah. Sometimes I heard to do it twice. All right. Oh, look yeah. at that. Perfect. Ooh, look at that. Okay, back at the table. Got the shrinker and stretcher bolted to the table. Just drill a hole through these. These things, you know, they're not that expensive. Put a link to these as well. But um, for doing this kind of stuff, it's, it's, it's necessary. What hap how these things work actually, there's some dies in here and, and it grips the metal and pushes it in on the shrinker. This one actually grips it in and pushes it out. You'd be surprised how easy it is to bend a, a flange like that with, it, with this tool. So on this, there's the, that's the bottom flange and that's the top flange where the window seal was gonna go. 
the smaller one. So we want to bend that upwards. It's just the end we're doing. We're not doing both ends. If you were going to do both ends, you're going to want to get one end right, bring it over there and figure out, you know, you can put a mark on here where you're going to start the second one. Cool thing about having both of these is, is that as you bend it, you screw up and you bend too much, you just go back instead of shrinking it, you stretch it. You can touch it up and, and go back and forth until you get it 100% accurate. It'd be really nice. So we'll just start over here. Basically squeeze it. You kind of work your way down, move it, you know, eight to a quarter at a time. Probably not a quarter, but just get that going. And don't try to do it all at once. Just work it in, go back and forth with it and you'll see it goes. It doesn't take much. We're not even doing the whole, the, you know, the corner doesn't have to go all the way up because it's only partially into the corner that we're even going. So we're not gonna go that far. All right, let's take it over to the truck and see how that looks. How about we take ourselves to that new Mexican restaurant and get some food? Is a new Mexican restaurant? A new one. I love new Mexican Tex -Mex, restaurants. Tex-Mex, 100% Tex-Mex. The best in town? The best in town. Let's go. Let's go. All right, got our piece back over from uh, the shrinker there. See that bend is perfect. No problems there. Now, I already trimmed off both ends. This end is straight. It's not even going into the, to the corner, so we'll, we'll be cool there. This end here goes into the radius. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scribe a line on both ends where it's gonna get cut, and then we'll scribe a line on the end of where that, that corner is right there. But you gotta remember, the thick, this is sitting on top, so the, it's actually gonna go back and gonna go down just a little bit. The, that, the, where, the way it needs to go back though is definitely, it's just the thickness of this metal. So what we can do is just trim this back and leave it just a little bit smaller. We'll cut the, cut the cutout a little bit smaller so that way we can test fit it and we can sand it up until it's perfect on this edge right here. Same on the other end. It'll drop down a little bit and do the same thing, but just get it a little bit small and you'll be covered. So we'll just go ahead and cut that out, weld it in, ready for the window. Okay. Got it all cut out and uh, I already fitted up in there. It fits pretty good. I had to, like I said, I cut it short and then I sanded it up with the grinder to get this edge where I needed it to be. The sides came out okay. So we'll clamp this in and tack it up. But also don't forget, you're gonna sand the, the edges where you're gonna weld. If you don't wanna try to weld through rust, that's nasty or paint. Of work, yeah, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, well, if you think about it, I mean, yeah, you got to buy some tools to do this. You could buy a window if you, if you can buy a window, but we 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 literally thought about doing this yesterday, and we said, well, let's do it. Well, even if you can get the window, you couldn't get it in a day, more than likely. Right. So, learning these things and having these tools around, you're going to use it throughout the whole project. I, I guarantee it. There's, you're gonna a, there's, it. A, there's a couple more spots we're going to need it. <laughs> uh, you think? <laughs> Let me look. You're going to need a, you're going to need a tetanus shot. You might. So, hey, if you want to follow along, subscribe um, and hit the little bell so you get notified. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a whole separate playlist for just this project 
That way, if you just want to follow along on just this one, and you can just go right to it and follow. Um, we're going to try to get after this thing probably every two or three weeks, at least do something yeah. on it. Yeah. And uh, we got some big plans. It's going to be uh, more than two or three weeks to get it done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, get a rendering done so they can see what our vision is. Yeah. And, uh, yes go from there. It's going to be off the hook. This bus is going to be incredible. Something you've never seen. And I'm not talking about a dance in bed or whatever we were talking about before. It's we got some stuff that nobody's done and you won't believe it can be done. Yes. So you're going to have to subscribe. Stay tuned.